Hiya! For the Lightning folks, welcome back to the channel. This week we're here with Ryan from Rapid Training and we're going back to school. Just, just do your thing, I just want to see you do your thing. No more, no less. I can already tell you it's going to be one of those things. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> In my head, the road was going right to the left. And this is Compton. Is this for the Bloods or the Crips here? <laughs> yeah. Right folks, we're here with Ryan from Rapid Training. Let's crack on with the day. Let's go and do it. Right, so we're out here and right. Okay then folks, right, this is a rapid training day. What is rapid? Well, Ryan, what is rapid? Rapid training, we are a motorcycle training company um, dealing with um, post-test riders who want to be as good as they can be. We're firm believers that everyone has got the ability to be a great rider. Um, just not those who are born with that, that, that perceived natural ability. If people want it enough, with the right training, they can be as good as they want to be. Yep. We've got a big history with racing and uh, current and ex-police riders coaching for us. Um, yeah, and our, our sort of mission is to inspire people to ride and do it well straight on the other traffic. Awesome. Yeah, so very relevant and realistic training. We have our own syllabus, um, with, you know, resulting from millions of miles worth of riding to the highest level, both on the road and track. Yeah. It's all about making you as good as you can be at the stuff that maybe you're not quite so good at and being even better at the things you're already good at. Awesome. So why why would somebody come to you, like Rapid, rather than say, do the IEM, the Rosper route, that sort of thing? The pace of what we sort of deliver, and I don't mean pace is in the speed we go straight across. Okay, gotcha. Um, the, the sort of speed we ride, it's more of, you know, the IEM and whatnot, it's all volunteer based. You might get an hour or so with your observer or your true to tutor. Yep. Whereas it's an all-day event, so the rapid is very much will make you as good as you can be as soon as you can be. Gotcha. Now, folks, if you've watched the Bike Safe vid, you would have seen me on my absolute best behaviour, knowing what they're looking for, basically riding, trying to ride anyway, how I would have to pass the police course. Today is going to be, I am within reason going to ride how I normally would ride, and then Ryan is going to observe that and he's going to give me feedback on maybe where I could do things a little bit better uh, and, and we'll go from there so it's going to be as re realistic as I possibly can make it. It's a nice wee village this isn't it? Yeah Hartley Whitney I don't often come down this way I sort of tend to coach west where we'll end up in a bit. Yeah. It's probably the downside of this job we end up going through the countryside and <laughs> just realise I didn't quite try hard enough. At <laughs> well we've picked a nice day for it mate. This is like the weather starting now, isn't it? <laughs> I know we, had a nice, we had a nice week the other week and then it got a bit chilly, didn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, hopefully this is us now. We'll see. me to do any sort of commentary or just no, no, just, 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 right. just, just just do your thing I just want to see you do your thing no more no less okay, man. I can already tell it's going to be one of them days what's that I can already tell it's going to be one of those days <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> it's weird. I feel, I feel slight, not nervous, but I'm more conscious that I'm being observed on this than I was on the bike safety. Is that because you're hopefully doing what you would normally do? Yeah. But but also when you're riding in front of a police, where you knew what he wanted to see. Yeah, absolutely. So what's like the what is the objective of of, of rapid then? What? What what's the point of, of coming with rapid? Is it to get quicker? Is it to be safer? No, is it... no, no. We're firm believers of, of the aim is to ride the motorbike well. Yep. As a byproduct of doing something properly, doing it well, we can then be safer as a byproduct. Yep. You can ride faster if that's your wish. Yep. Whilst not compromising safety. It's about doing the things you can blatantly like already do. You can go, you can turn, you can stop, you can read the road. It's about doing it better, uh, and hopefully as good as you can do it. You know, I'm not looking at removing any fun from anybody's ride. 
what you want from your ride is, you know, takes me a little while to work out just from watching the way you ride, and it's different from rider to rider. To rider. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's all, all about still making it fun, straight across. Straight across. Well, the field. And it's very much up to get um, up to the petrol station, get some fuel. Gotcha. Let you fuel up, we'll have a, a quick chat, seeing a couple of things we can talk about, some very, very simple things. Okie dokie. Okay. All that riding there, would you say that's about natural? Uh, it's never going to yeah. be 100% because you're riding with someone you don't know. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, about normal. Ish. No, no, to, 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 a tiny, tiny start to the day. The sort of almost the, the, the simplest thing for me this bike was um, charging towards the back of cars. Yeah. Um, which, I don't mean in a, you know, when you do follow them, it's not as a thing, you're not going to stop if they break or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, these days you, you struggle to buy a, an underpowered bike yeah. of, of, of any sort. So time is massively your friend. So a little bit of room, make the centre of the car or van being this big, make it smaller. Gotcha. Um, certainly on a tall bloke on a tall bike, because we start seeing above it, we do tend to creep a little bit closer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to just, you know, extend that time frame. Okay. Have more time to think. And, um, you sort of quite, you have a fair bit of concentration on side roads. Mm -hmm. The silver Mercedes pull up to the junction, and even as we passed it, you did a give him a wave, yeah. which is quite nice because he did stop. But actually, you get to the point of in the um, in, in the old twist of the wrist um, videos that Keith Code done. He talks about having like ten dollars worth of concentration. By the time we start start spending some of that money on that guy there, when we're doing a bit of a bend onto a straight, mm -hmm. it's almost so. We're going to look forward, we can deal with it, you know, and I get the thanking him, I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying don't oh, yeah. thank I'm not, I'm not looking at yeah. him, I'm, I'm looking yeah. there. I'd be surprised if the camera, I mean, but there is a little bit of, yeah, that just, you mm. know, use our peripheral vision. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, minor, minor things to start with, it's pretty, okay. pretty tidy. Cool. cool. We're going to go on out, up to, just up, we're going to cross the A33, we're going to get into some nice twisty roads. And um, yeah, ride to what you can see, do your thing. Beautiful. Right up. When, when we go on to the um, A33, we're on there for like hundreds of metres. It feels like a national, it's a 40 and it is a, a classic spot. Right, gotcha, all received. <laughs> yeah, I've got to admit, car cars or junctions, side junctions, I'm really cautious of now because that's where I got wiped out, so I'm yeah. I'm, I'm very conscious of, of them now, especially if there's anything in it. Once you've had an experience, yeah. Try try to ride through that same road layout. Let's say with that, that bump I had with the van years ago. If the road layout is is the same, it takes a lot of a lot more effort than it should to sustain my speed, sustain my position. You know, that everything inside me just wants me to slow right down. Yeah. But to be honest with you, I, I'm I'm always I'm always going to ease off yeah. when I see a junction. Now, there's, there's no way I'll I'll keep the speed on yeah. just because I've. I've had people pulling out, so... It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> and it whacks your insurance up, whether it's your fault or not, so... Yes, yes. <laughs> As a major lights, we're going to go left. Left, left. I'm going to push right on out to the offside lane at the next set of lights. OK. We're going to go right. This is the, this, this is the one. Oh, this is the 40. If you're going to get done for speeding, it'll be here. Right, oh. <laughs> It's that natural reaction, isn't it? Oh, Just oh, three, three lanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roundabout, we're going to go left. Left, First left. Exit. Gotcha. I'm assuming we're nationals now, are we? No, 40s at the minute. Still 40s. Oh, yeah. Me. <laughs> Following it round to the right. Okay. breaking there. Tracked it to the face which yeah, yeah. sting a bit. I'm just gonna leave a mark on the visor. Yeah. I see why you took me down here. <laughs> 
The old hedges hide a wee bit, don't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see you using all the road. Are you right. happy enough for me to do that? Right, you're right. Right, you're right. Right, oh, okay. The field on your left, there's some llamas. Oh, yeah. Llamas. Yeah, yeah. A nice little stretch of road. Yeah, just looking for the vision up the inside there. All right, it's going right to the right. There we go. Turning right, it's the one towards Pangbourne, so one two third on that. Gotcha. Then just as we come off the roundabout, there's a big lay by on the left, we'll pull in there. Okay. Take this next one, and then lay by where the bus is, we'll pull it behind the red car. Gotcha. Gosh. So normally it wouldn't be a helmet off kind of thing, because uh, obviously with, it, with the comms and the, and the camera action, yep. is I'll come out to you. Do, 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 do. Of course, on those bends right through there. Again, about natural, about. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. You, you know, you could see. Uh, you, you know, you work hard at riding well, which is which which is uh, you know, a great thing to see. You look at the cross views, and of course, we're going to take the information as what we can see. You ask if we can use the full size of the size of the road. Yep. Well, I'm, you know, certainly on that ride, I'm not looking to influence any anyone else. Why didn't you? Um, th there was one bit, especially when we were coming up behind the two heavies, I saw that you were right out. Yeah. But to be honest, I'd already clocked there was a second heavy, and I'd seen that there were option. There was at least yeah. one option coming on the right. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm not overtaking here anyway, so there's no point in me being out that far. Although, having just said that, it might have given me a little bit more vision in front of the second heavy. In my head, the road was going round to the left. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll come in, I'll look up the inside to, to try and get the vision there. Yeah. Um, the, the, the difference between having it and not having it was for you to get that view, you'd have had to come out looking to get that offside view. Whereas, hmm. whereas I come around the bend before. You're already there. Yeah, well, well cause I, you know, and I know that road a good seven and a half out of ten. Is that we sort of come round the bend. Once I've got the view, I'll do what I can to keep it. Mm -hmm. If I don't, if I haven't got it, if I was in your position, I certainly wouldn't go out hunting for yeah. it. I would just let it come to you, um, which is the right thing to do. It's referred to as lots of things, riding on the wrong side of the road, the offside in, and, and, mm. and, and all sorts. It's the pros and cons of it. Uh, for you, it gives you a lot more vision, but what was always drilled into me is that you've got to be wary about what impact that has on oncoming, on other road users. Yeah. It can freak out people when you're behind them and you're on the wrong side. People coming towards, if you don't know what you're doing and you're hanging out, you may be out there at the wrong time. Yeah. So there's a... There's a bend up ahead where you haven't got the vision and all of a sudden a vehicle comes head on with you. You can freak them out. Yeah, of course, you know, the, the written rule is, is very much the reason we position as a whole, you know, is safety, stability and view. Yep. Those three things. Yep. Safety is the overriding, uh, overarching thing of everything, really, you know, because we want to make it home. Yep. Um, but we can be safe whilst riding on the other side of the road, otherwise yep. we'd never overtake. Yep, yep. Um, it's all about when you do it. That's mm -hmm. what I say, we never go hunting through. It's a view you've already got, but absolutely, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with keeping it if it's safe and legal. If, it, if it's open in a bend, it does make the bike more stable, therefore make it a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, again, like you, when I was on the advanced course, it was very much, imagine we're coming the other way. Yeah. It's always going to be that. So there's, there's an element of, in my mind, once I've seen a bend, and if it does start veering to lab, I've always got a point where even if it's clear, I've got to be on my side of the road before yeah. that point. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, otherwise, we're going to start encroaching too far. Gotcha. We're never going to go around a blind bend on the wrong side of the road. That would just be ridiculous. If it's safe, if it's legal, getting an advantage, 
got to have a genuine benefit from it. Otherwise, like you say, it just looks a bit off, which goes in that perception thing. Yep. Um, perception of other road users. And whilst I do coach it, I am aware of it. It's also, there's got to be a little bit of people have gone out and invested in their training. So they know what they're doing is right. And just because someone else hasn't, doesn't mean we should totally change our style of gotcha. life. Just be aware of it. You know, it, people can go get a bit too excited about the perception of things for the road users on our side of the road. Mm. The guys coming on to us, that's, that's the, you know, if we make them do anything other than maybe lift their foot off the gas, then we're probably doing it at the wrong time. Gotcha. Uh, we're getting flashed and yeah. getting called all sorts of uh, sign language. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not there to scare people. But like the way you sit on the bike, you do change it quite a bit, though. The old um, sort of ride quite flat-footed on the bike. Yeah. So when I, when, I, when, I, when I come up behind you before we even met, big toes sticking out everywhere. That's the job, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Then when we started, you were on the balls of your feet. Yeah. Which I thought, oh, okay, that's, that's, you know, maybe, you know, I'm a big fan of sitting on a motorway and dual cars, just get comfy. When you get into something a bit more involving, maybe the balls of the feet, you do any sport game from darts or whatever, we're generally on the balls of our feet, mm-hmm. give ourselves that extra control. But when we're steering, how do you, which way do you think your body goes when we're going into a corner? It depends what bike I'm on, but on this one, uh, uh, this one I'll lead with the top of my body, I think. I'd say more often when I got a bit technical and we were still riding a bit of a pace, you tend to push the bike under a little bit, mm. a little bit. And I've seen, you've seen the videos of you, you know, scraping your knee and whatnot, on the, you know, you're more aware of how to, 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 to ride the bike through the bed. Mm. But certainly through some of that stretch, there's a bit of, a little bit of pushing under, because there's almost, there's that. So we're trying to keep the head upright, but the bike's, mm. in, you know, not well, dramatically. Because I, I find that if I'm on th- those roads, if I'm doing that, I'm putting them, my head on offer, so I know this bike is perfectly all right throwing the front in. Yeah. That's why I'm not leading with the head and the tighter stuff. Yeah, yeah. But can we, could we move further towards the kerb? So if we can get around that bend, if we're leaning into it and the bike can be at that angle, or we lean against it and the bike is at that angle, these minor, minor things, and this is, you know, I'm a firm believer there's no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. You're riding to a standard where it is almost nitpicking. But the whole point being is that if I can help you be just a, even more aware of something that you're doing, I say right. no, no generally right or wrong with the feet is, is it a conscious decision mm. to put your feet where your feet go or to push the bike under? Okay. Because of course, slow speeds, we've got to go full Dougie Lampkin and we're doing that. <laughs> but when we start getting to a bit of a pace, because, you know, there's, there's a bit of pace through there. Can we keep the bike more upright? Okay. If the bike's more upright, we can get on the gas a bit sooner. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So more stable. It's options. It's options. Yep. Got you. Thoughts on that as we ride, just to sort of play with it. I'll okay. jump in the front. I'll do. I'll do my ride. We're going to take the next left. I'll lead, and this is the next one of the big white sign just after the bus. Beautiful. Right. So we're taking this left here towards Bradfield. Maybe we'll look at turning in. We've got further giveaway line. The national speed limit. Looking up ahead. The road is straight. And at the end, looks like it goes round to the right. It's got a house on the left. Houses in these junctions or driveways. So we start drifting over towards this near side position. To help us out with the bend, to keep us well away from the car that's oncoming. Round from one of the near side junction, that'd be the one that's connected to those houses, slowing the road, taking it nice and wide. As soon as I can see into that junction, I can almost forget about it, drift over towards the uh, hazard warning lines. Over the W of slow as the road continues round the left and slightly uphill. Both the bend and the hill are going to slow me down. Nice and tidy, nice and early over towards this near side position. Driving up, we've got the black car, I'm slowly gaining on it, so I'm already thinking about an overtake, the where, the when, the how. It's got the black Audi all the way over. We've got the change of road surface beneath me as the road disappears up round the left. Gaining on the black car as he slows. Dropping a gear for me up over the crest. See the road drops down to the left. So I'm going to drift over towards that near side position. Red car approaching. See if it's on. It's open. So I can go out for a little look. We've got that car slowing. So I'm going to push it off. He's put his brakes on. Safely back on my side of the road. A little bit of brakes into the bend. Leaning with the bike. Got the lorry. I'll give it some room. Got the near side junction. He's seen us. He's drifting. Back on the gas, back out as the white van approaches. Got the junction on the near side, over towards the offside here for this bend. We're gaining a little grey car. Up over the top, looking over, looking under, looking around. Using the brakes. I'm not drifting out yet, into a 30. We've got the house on the right, so there's going to be a junction or driveway. You've got the advance warning of something in the foreground. Advance warning of a slippery road surface. On a day like today, you'd consider maybe not, but 
We're out in the farm country now, so we're thinking mud. Traffic calming measures, offside bend, offside mirror. Drifting out nice and early, making my intentions known. So the brakes and the indicator on that car there, turning into the gated community. Downhill, still in a 30. Upside down triangles, that's going to be a give way or stop. It's actually a stop, the road narrows. Slowing the road into a 20, you've got the car towards. Slowing for the 20, pedestrian crossing the road, you can see the junction. Got the lady there. Clear left, clear right. The traffic armor measures in the foreground, the road disappears round to the left. Got a 20, generally around schools or super busy areas. Or, or the whole of central London these days. So I've got priority over this guy, so I'm going out nice and wide just to sort of, I don't want to say dominate the road, but just let her know that that's, that's what's happening. Give her a thanks. Into the 30, nice and early in the mirror. You've got the grey van coming around. There's no way he's slowing to, 30, to 20. Traffic calm measures up ahead. Hazard warning lines. Junction to driveways to both sides. Got the two cyclists, the parked car, the vehicle towards one way and a parked white one on the near side as well. Just a basic bit of maths here where I'm going to meet this car, meet the cyclist. He's pushing his way out. She's pushing her way out. Got the white car towards, got the priority again. I'm just going to hang out wide, let him know that we're coming through. Into the 30s, he's got the nationals there. The road goes up and over. Clear both sides. This is one of the few times we can use all the horsepower. The road goes up around to the right in the shadows. Going to move over, got the runner there, so just slowing down for the runner. Opposite right side of the road is nice and clear, so leave as much room as I can in case he's absolutely hanging out. Junction to the right as the road disappears around to the offside. Staying nice and wide until I can see what's coming. So up and over, going down the hill, so over towards the centre of my lane, just to crest the hill, and then drifting over towards that here. So I caught the top of a brake light there, got the chevrons, the slow in the road. Double bends, first one being to the left, so my plan is to stay nice and wide, cut it in, using the brakes, dropping the gear. Got a Honda, got a junction on the side, using the brakes for this one. Got the junctions there to the near side, or at least the driveways. Pushing out nice and wide, already thinking about the overtake on this one. Not going to get it done there, so I'm going to keep the view I've already got up a gear, just to relax the engine a little bit. And look at that road. We've got the blue one coming, but I can get it in enough time. Nice and wide, the road slightly left, then right. Drifting out towards that near side position, you've got the van coming. Staying out nice and wide. Got the junction to the near side, that got that vehicle with his indicator off, easing off, down the centre, maximising margins both sides, a mirror there. Got a van full of an offside junction, we're going to take the second one, not this first one, the one by the white sign and the blue sign. On the brake, checking the mirrors, looking up the road ahead. Back off the gas straight on out, centre of the road, I can see everyone, everyone can see me, staying out nice and wide, a little bit of brakes, back off the brakes, close an offside junction, clear so I can ignore it, pushing on out nice and wide, using the whole road where it's safe and legal, slightly left, round to the right, you've got the house up there, near side entrance, nice and clear, got the junction there to the left, give it a little bit of room, then power on that pass here. Taking the road out towards that offside position. Dropping the gear on the way into this bend. Back on the gas. This is a funky bend, this. It looks like we're going to go straight on, but we're going right round to the right. So we're going to take some brakes in towards the bend. Gravel to the left-hand side, so just thinking it could be all the way through the bend. Amount of people that go up there. Road's narrow slightly. Driving on, we've got the mirror. There's no movement in it, so I can almost ignore it. Jumps into the left. Staying out nice and wide, expecting vehicles to be getting in the centre of the road. Advance one of the road narrows, and we're already on a narrow road. So just easing on, watching that limit point. Got the bike coming. And not too interested with this big astronaut helmet on. Mirror nice and clear. Moving through. Further we can see, faster we can go, slowing the road. Got the chevrons there, we haven't had any on the last couple of bends, so we should be tighter than the last couple. Off the gas. As it opens up, back on the gas. Up a gear for me, just taking it through the bend. Got a pathway or bridle way to the offside, got the oncoming car. I've got plenty of room to my side. Got the white fingertip post there, so it's going to be a junction or driveway. Out we go, as it opens up, pushing on up the road. The white car just disappeared around that bend. Road narrowing slightly, taking the brakes towards the bend, down the gear. Just letting it open up. A little bit of gravel in the centre of the low, position two. 
Taking it all out, out towards the offside. Got a van, a car. Quite a bit going on. I just see where the van disappeared off to. Just keep an eye on the road surface. Into the shadows. So we've got three cars ahead of me now. I'm not charging up into them. Quite a narrow road. It's can we look about the overtake? If I overtake along this road at the distance there, I'm committing myself to a three-car overtake with very few emergency sort of landing areas. So I'm just going to ease off. A little bit of restraint. Quite a bumpy road anyway. Not closing down on them yet. On a winding road, looking over the top, down the near side, through the windscreen of the, uh, the pickup truck, even though it's tinted, you get some movement nice and early. Putting the weight through my feet here, because I want to use the uh, sort of more towards the near side. It's a bit, little bit bumpy. Entering a 40 or 30. It's not often in our rides we'll do that. Advance one of a double bend. First one being to the left. Got the, near, the offside indicator on on the pickup. Just going to let him do his thing. Into a driveway. Kind of reminds me of my house. Got the mirror there on the offside, that near side driveway. Quite a narrow road. It's expecting vehicles oncoming. In fact, there is one. He's pulled over for the van. Just dropping it right down now. But oftentimes, we need to show more restraint than progress. Closing the gap a little bit on the van. We've got the National. Just really thinking about overtaking it. Heading into the National. I'm pretty sure I can out-accelerate a van. So off we go. Once I can see it safe and clear. Advance one of a double bend, first one being to the right. My plan is already to stay nice and wide to the near side and cut in if it's safe to do so. There's one, we've got a junction there to the left, looking into it, nice and clear. For the oncoming car, over towards position one. Taking it nice and wide, just waiting for that road to open up. Out towards position three. Out there. Got the mirror on the offside, no movements, there's nothing in it. Up over the top. Just staying nice and wide here. And again, use a little bit of the offside, safely back on my side of the road before the bend starts. Got the van's warning there's something there, just a triangle, couldn't read it, but I know there's a sign. Just like slippery road surface. Offside bend, offside mirror, some more advanced warning of a double bend. And then just a little bit of local knowledge. Goes downhill quite sharp. I think the bends are actually relatively sharp as well, certainly the left. So we're going to go down here, around the brakes, bit of brake gear overlap. Nice and wide, is it this one? It's been a little while. Yeah, a little bit. Expecting vehicles on my side of the road as it opens up. Down the hill, slowing the road, advance one of the company's horses and ponies, crossroads there to speed change, down to 40. Down the gear for me, crossroads left and right. In a built-up area, then I'm just going to sit in that sort of position two and a half-ish. Not all the way over by the white line. I don't want to be swerving all over the road unless there's an absolute need to. Change of speed limit there down to a 30. And this is Compton. Yeah, another nice village. Is this for the Bloods or the Crips here? Which one's yeah, this? this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, helmet cam, cockpit cam, sync it up. One, two, three. Helmet cam, 360. One, two, three. In off, helmet cam, sync them up. One, two, three. <laughs> Boom! Almost scripted. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> so I left for a little bit there to pull you off. Any sort of standout pulls on my ride? Uh, no, very smooth. Very smooth. Um, yeah, it's like being back on a job course. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, like following the three vehicles? No, I was happy. I wouldn't have put yeah. an overtake in there, no. But, uh, no, yeah. And, and also just having that discipline, because it's quite easy, because they're going slow, it's quite easy to close the view down. Yeah. But the thing with overtake, and so much with him riding, uh, like to me, it's an on and off switch. It's either on or it's off. There's very little in between. I just hold him back, hold him back. Um, trying to use the whole road where I can, mm -hmm. but also picking that point of, I've got to be in before then. Yeah. Unless the bend all of a sudden opens up more, I've got to be in before then, you know, I don't, I don't want to put anyone under pressure, I don't want to make it more difficult for myself to come back in, getting on the gas, coming out of the bends as, as, as hard as I can, mm -hmm. without risking traction, going towards the next bend relatively uh, decent pace, which means for me on this bike, a bit more brakes than the the sort of old adage of advanced riding, which, which, which was, you know, if you show a brake light, you, you've, you've sort of failed. Yeah, yeah. Different on the big twins, I know, because it's got so much engine braking. But um, what's your thoughts on braking versus acceleration sense? For me, well, on this thing, I'm lucky. I've got the engine braking. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll show a light bit of brakes if I think there's vehicles behind, just to let them know that I am slowing. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, 
you know, I'm quite happy not to bother with brakes yeah. if I don't need them. If I need them, I'm not worried about using them. You know, so it's not all about braking doesn't ruin smooth ride. Poor braking at the wrong point certainly does. Right. I think you even called out one of your commentaries earlier on about all oh, braked a little bit late there. I don't think you did. It was, it was, it was quite nice. It's, it's strengths and weaknesses. And what we try and do is, like I say, take your good bits, make them better, and take the bits that maybe aren't to the same standard and increase them as well. Gotcha. Whilst trying to enjoy it. Because like I said, I'd hate for anyone <laughs> to take the fun out of it. Uh, I've got to admit, I was a bit nonchalant. I was, a, I was just thinking, oh, well, it's just going to be, it's going to be like it's another the, training thing. An, another sort of bike safe. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's not. It's definitely, definitely <laughs> making me think a lot yeah. more. It's good to enjoy it. I'm genuinely surprised at how realistic, if that's the right word, this training is. Yeah, you can see. Have I? I was just thinking. <laughs> oh, he was right over, wasn't he? I'm not used to being so quiet for so long when I'm riding. I'm normally talking all the time. How do you do it?